Hey boys and girls, Chris here, and in this video we're going to talk briefly about the exposure triangle. Alright, first of all, what is the exposure triangle? It's the th basically the three components, and there are more components, but we'll start off with the three major components that make up an exposure. Namely, the three main components are your aperture, which is the size of the opening that your lens is providing. We'll talk more about that. Your shutter speed, how how much time your shutter is open and allowing light to go in and hit your sensor. And finally, the sensitivity of your sensor or the film speed if you're still shooting film. So simply put, it is the combination of those three things for an ideal exposure. Now, what is the ideal exposure? You know, this is something that is very subjective. You know, you might want something a little darker, a little lighter, but you, to know these components and how they would play to what you're looking for in your image is important. So let's talk about what I consider the most important aspect of this <clears throat> the exposure is the aperture. What does it control and what does it do? Well, here we see inside a typical lens, the openings are expressed in, in what we call f-stops. f1.4 being the most wide open and f16 or 22 or 32 being closed down. Now your lens may have a different sequence of numbers. The intervals will be the same but your lens may only go down to 5-6 depending on the quality of the lens. But a very quick expensive lens will be an f1.4 to you know f22 lens which would have a good range of openings. But it's important to note that the numbers, the smaller the number, is reflecting of how how large the opening is going to be in your lens. Now, what does that affect? It affects the volume of light, which is going to uh, hit your sensor or your film plane, but it also affects the focal distance. The smaller numbers, like we see the top image here, f1.4, very narrow depth of field range. You're just getting that bird if that if that bird, the fourth bird from the left, is what you're focusing on, the depth of field range of 1.4 would be fairly small. And as you close down, allowing less light to hit the sensor, your focus distance would increase. Your depth of field range would increase as well. So what does this mean? Is that There's a trade-off. There's a trade-off between a control, the volume of light that's the exposure volume of light that's hitting the sensor or the film plane. But the trade-off is it also affects your depth of field, your focus. So what you're taking a picture of, depending on, you know, you may want a narrow focus, a, a short depth of field, uh, something in the 1-4 range to really isolate your subject. Or you may want a more broad view or uh, landscape, let's say, where a large part of everything in the picture is technically in focus, but they all have consequences in how much volume of light is hitting the sensor. So let's look at a few examples here. Here's F16, and we can see that pretty much most of the frame is in focus. F11, F4, 2.8, and finally 1.4. You can see the difference progressively as we go down. The other aspect of the triangle is shutter speed. Now it controls the length of time the light is allowed to hit the sensor or the film plane and it consequently is affected by the, mo the amount of blur. The slower the shutter speeds, the more blur. The quicker the shutter speeds, the less blur as we can see here in this image here. So you can see how this would affect a typical scenario. This was shot at 1 16th, 1 1/1600th of a second. And this was shot at 1 13th of a second. So these numbers are expressed in typical fractions of a second or seconds if you go past the 1 second, 2 second, 4 second intervals. But consequently you have another variable here in the equation. And the final part of the equation is the ISO, or the ASA is. <clears throat> and it affects the sensitivity of the sensor or the film plane. And the consequence of a quicker 
or a higher number on ASA is it generates more noise as you can see in this image in the top left we have ISO 100 versus ISO 12800 at the bottom right and you can see how much more noise is generated now the a ISO 100 is going to be less sensitive to light as opposed to the 12800 it's going to allow you to photograph in more low light situations but the trade-off is the noise you generate typically more noise as we can see here ISO 100 ISO 400 800 and typically 6400 and you can see very little but some noise uh, added here and sensors are getting better and better at this and they can this noise performance is getting much better as cameras get better but you can see a low ISO versus a high, high ISO or ASA and what it would produce so what's the winning combination you can see here f28 at 500 a second may equal the perfect in this in a given situation a perfect uh, exposure but the same exposure could be at f11 could be at 1 30th 1 30th of a second would equal the same exposure and this is if the ISO is stationary the ISO is not moving the ISO would be say 100 or 400 consistently so that's not a moving part of the equation so the consequences the ISO generates noise when raised but it controls the sensitivity so if you're in a low light situation you may choose to raise the ISO in order to get more light if you've exhausted the aperture and the shutter speed as much as you possibly can. You have the shutter which controls the ability to freeze action the slower the shutter speed the more light you're going to allow in but obviously it's going to become more blurry so if you have a, a subject that's moving that you don't want moving in the picture then you have decisions to make. And finally the aperture which <clears throat> less focal range the wider the smaller the f-stop, which is the wider the opening, the more light you're going to allow in to hit the sensor of the film plane, but it's going to control and narrow your depth of field consequently. So what options do we have? We have manual mode, which gives the operator full control over the three aspects of making good exposure. We have aperture priority, which lets the operator set the aperture in the ISO, and the camera sets this, the corresponding shutter speed. We have shutter priority, which lets the aperture set the shutter speed and the ISO, and the camera sets the aperture. Or we have program mode, which the oper operator can sacrifice all the exposure con considerations over to the camera. So what you ex what you sacrifice over the camera, they're all choices that you have to make. Set the aperture to your desired aperture, and then see what it yields for shutter speed and if it yields too slow of a shutter speed and you know that you have to go up in shutter speed which is going to affect your aperture and may consequently as a last resort you may be forced to check your ISO if you have a situation with too little light you can open the aperture slow the shutter speed or you can get a higher ISO they all have consequences if you open the aperture you're getting a narrower depth field. If you slow your shutter speed, you're getting more motion blur. In a higher ISO, you're allowing more noise. So they all have consequences. Too much light, if it's too bright out and you're looking for a darker exposure, you can close the aperture. You can use a faster shutter speed or a lower ISO. If you want to adjust the focus range, larger f-stops, more in focus, smaller f-stops, less in focus. So if you want to control the motion blur, the faster shutter speeds, freeze the motion, slower shutter speeds, more visible blur. And the ISO control finally is typically the last resort and will allow, allow for low or high light or high light situations, but it generates noise. The, the when you go up in ISO sensitivity, it's going to generate noise. So the conclusion is, what do you want? There are choices you have to make.
they all have consequences on making a good exposure and getting what you desired results out of your image.